Hello, everyone. Welcome to our first annual art show. We are so excited to bring this to you all today. Thank you all for joining us. Um, we, I hope you have your bottle of wine at hand. We would like to toast to all of our artists today uh, in just a little bit. Um, you know, I got dressed up just for you guys. It's been a while. Being in quarantine, I haven't put any makeup on or anything, so it's been kind of nice. I'd like to thank Helen Bailey for my jewelry that I have on today. Look very nice with what I'm wearing, so thank you very much, Helen, for that. And I'd also like to thank uh, Kevin Smith over in the winery for donating all of the wine to all of our artists today. So thank you very much for working with us and for always being such a big support of everything that we do. So just a little bit of recap of what's going to happen today, just so that you'll know what to expect. Our show is going on until five o'clock. We might go a little over, we might go a little under. Um, but it's all up to you guys and how much you're enjoying today. So one of the things we just want you all to know that as you know, with being virtual, sometimes things are out of our control. So if you see anything that is inappropriate, please share with us so that we can make sure to get that taken care of right away. It's very important the security that we have some security um, measures in place and we do have somebody that is watching, but we are one big group. So if you see anything, please, please share with the rest of us so we can get that taken care of as quickly as possible. Um, another thing I just wanted to remind you all that we, I had earlier this week, I had sent out a printable program. So the program will look similar to this. I hope you had a chance to uh, get that printed out and it'll feature all of our artists and who they are and a little bit about them. So if you haven't already done so, please go on and print that out. It's a nice little keepsake and it's very informational and it has a lot of the information that we'll be talking about today. So uh, print that out. Um, and then of course, social media. We're always excited to show what we're doing on social media. So if you, um, we have a hashtag that hopefully you saw on the banner when you first logged in. But it is going to be our staff, so SAEC for Staff Assembly Exec Executive Committee, hashtag FS Art Show. So if you are taking pictures, which we encourage you to do so, please tag us on social media and place that um, hashtag so that we can make sure to go back and find it later on and, and share it with, with everyone else. Um, let's see a couple other things. So in the, in the chat room, you would have seen you would have also gotten in my email, but also in the chat room we have now, there is a link that you can go on and you can uh, one, take a look at what the, all the artists work. Um, and, and so there's a website that'll show all the artists and what they've done, and they'll all be numbered. So keep in mind those numbers because what you're gonna do with those numbers is we're gonna have two different um, prizes to give away today. One is going to be for the people's choice. So recognize, so keep those numbers in mind. And when you go, there'll be a second link to a Qualtrics forum where you will go in and, and put in your vote. You only get one vote. And once you log into it, it's not going to let you go back and change it. So make sure that you have that number correctly. Um, I know that a lot of us are, are at home, so it's we don't have those dual screens. Um, but if you look on your phone um, or if you can um, look on your on your computer, that's great. But you'll look at the page, you'll look at the art, you'll look at the number, and then you'll go to that Qualtrics form and you are going to enter that number or you're going to select that form and that's how you're going to place your vote. We will be reminding you to do so throughout the event as well. So if you forget, don't worry, we will remind you. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Um, also just to remind you all that today's Art show is being recorded uh, so that we can share later on with those who were not able to attend today. So at this point, I would like to turn it over to, so as you know, this the art show is not just a staff assembly. We have joined forces with the arts department. And so I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Chapman, who would like to say a few words. Thank you, Belinda, so much to you and the staff assembly for making this possible, for bringing a dream to life. I was speaking with Professor Martin Valencia yesterday afternoon about this show, and you've brought to life his dream, which is showcasing all the art of the staff and the faculty who are not in the art and design department. 
and he was so excited that you were doing this. And his only regret is that we can't be in the Phoebe Conley Art Gallery today. Yet we can't wait to welcome all of you next late May to celebrate your art next year in person. But this is really exciting that over 70 of us are gathered here today to celebrate art for art's sake. I know you want to win a prize, but the truth is you did the art because you love doing it. You love it intrinsically. It expresses a part of yourself that you otherwise can't express. I grew up with a mother who was a sewer. She sewed all our clothing. That was her art. And she loved us and created art for us. That's what you're doing with your art. And by sharing it with us, we get to benefit from the love that you put into it. So thank you so much for sharing the love that you poured into creating the art. And I want to leave you with one final thought. The word art comes from the Latin, but it actually is parallel to the Greek word techne, which is where technology comes from in Greek. Techne means art. So you are involved in a technological process too when you create create your art. And you should always remember that you have many skills in your hands and in your mind and that it isn't just art. It's actually something very important to all of you individually, but also all of us collectively. And art is an expression of your individuality, but also community. And we really appreciate you sharing it today and hope you have a wonderful time. Thank you. Thank you very much for your kind words. And it has been a pleasure for the staff assembly to join forces with the arts department to do this. It has been so much fun. And I, I think I can speak on behalf of the entire committee when we say it. it's, it's beyond what we could have imagined as well. Of course, we have planned to be on campus and would have loved to have that happen. Um, but that's okay. We have next year. And next year, let's hope that we can do it on campus and we can all come together and, and do this. But I have an amazing, amazing team. I cannot stress how much of an amazing team I have who have been able to pull together and, and make today happen along with your department. So thank you again very much for joining forces and allowing us to partner with you to do this today. Thank you, Belinda. With that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over. So. Not that he needs any introduction, because we all know who he is, but I am going to share a short little bio about him. So, Saul Jimenez Sandoval immigrated to California as a young child and grew up tending the family farm as a bilingual and bicultural individual. He received his PhD in Spanish and Portuguese from the University of California at Irvine and participated in Cornell University School of Critical Theory summer program. He perceives his role as a provost and vice president of academic affairs as reflecting his deep commitment to empowering California San Joaquin Valley's multicultural students who will become tomorrow's leaders. So thank you, Dr. Sandoval, for being here with us today. I'm gonna to go ahead and turn it over to you. Thank you, Belinda, and thank you all of you for being here and for sharing your art with us. Um, I was asked to give a brief explanation of what art means to me. And I can tell you that growing up in a family of eight, I was the eighth, I'm the eighth child. Um, most of my sisters, I have five sisters and my two brothers are extremely artistic. So I thought that, you know, growing up that suddenly I was going to be struck by lightning and then the next day I would become an artist, but alas, it never actually happened. <laughs> but now I understand something about art that I did not back then. I understand that that art is an individual expression of someone who creates, uh, like Dr. Chapman said. And the artistic is not confined and it's never defined or it's never otherwise categorized either. I now understand that art, it's the courage to create and it's the courage to create something that's yours, something that's personal, something that you want to share with the world. It's something that truly indicates your vision for a better world. Every single artist, that I know, artists that has painted or sculpted or danced or dueled, like I saw, you know, some of the uh, some of the artists here uh, presented, or made music. Every single one of them creates art in order to share the art, 
nobody ever says I'm going to paint a painting and then I'm going to store it in my closet so that I can never show it to anybody again. So art in this case creates a sense of community and creates a sense of, of, of being together in order to move together to a future that is more promising and that is more filled with justice and equity. So along with that, then I want to, um, I want to let you know how much I appreciate individuals who create art because I know that in creating art, they bring something special to their workplace. They bring a different perspective and I want to encourage you to continue to do that um, and make Fresno State, you know, the great university that, uh, that it is. Um, and then really focus on that mission that we have of empowering every student for, for success. So thanks for all you did and I look forward to seeing all of your art. Thank you, Dr. Sandoval for that. Um, I feel like we really need an event like this and your support truly means a lot. Um, so without further ado, our next guest is Dr. Castro. Like Belinda said, not that he needs an introduction, but I just like, would like to share a little bit um, about him for those of you who are not familiar. So Dr. Joseph Castro is the first Californian to serve as president uh, at CSU Fresno. Um, he is the grandson of immigrants from Mexico, son of a single mother, and the first in his family to graduate from a university. Um, I just thought I'd share that because that resonates with me a lot. I'm a, a first generation college student as well. Um, he's the eighth president of the university since 2013, and prior to his appointment <clears throat> um, as vice chancellor, he held several leadership positions at the University of California campuses. Um, I'd also like to share that he's a native of Hanford, California, and he's the first member of his, again, like I said, he's the first member of his family um, to graduate. And his wife, Mary Castro, is also an avid supporter of the campus. Um, I just want to say thank you for your leadership in general. Um, I know that I am someone who is very involved in the community and I've been to several of your events. And one thing that I can say about Dr. Castro is that he is truly a bold, fearless leader. Um, I've never worked at, a, at an institution that supported you know, both staff, faculty, and the students. Um, it, it's really nice to know that we have someone who cares about us and just you know treats us like family as a whole um but without further ado i'd like to introduce dr castro hi crystal thank you so much for that introduction and it's nice to see everybody today uh happy friday all of you and uh you know it, it's it's uh it continues to be uh surreal to be on the campus without all of you but i I want to share with you that um, I look out my window between Zoom meetings and I often see at least a, a few graduates who are here taking pictures and doing it safely and, uh, and seeing moms and dads and grandparents sometimes and kids and um, it's, it's just another reminder of, uh, of the importance of the work that we all do together. And, I wanted to just spend a few minutes with you thanking you for for coming together in this powerful way. This is such a uh, consequential time in our lives and I think that um, coming together right now um, helps everybody. Uh, I was on a Zoom call earlier today and it was uh, there were people from all over the country but there's just this hunger to, to connect with people and uh, and the, doing it through your art uh, has made this a very important and powerful experience. Uh, you chose the right uh, speaker in the provost and, and also our dean because they're, they're naturals uh, in this field of, of arts. Um, that's not my strong skill set um, and I'm very um, honest about that and, and also very impressed with all of you that it's something that uh, you do well and that you love to do. Um, but I do remember um, a few years ago before I was president uh, when I lived in the Bay Area and uh, my daughter uh, Lauren is, is an artist and I remember uh, on many evenings uh, she'd have the music turned up, she'd have all of her supplies out 
and uh, you know easel and and paints and uh, she would do her thing sometimes all night long and uh, and I, I just remember how uh, passionate she was about that how important art was in her life and, and it still is and uh, that gives me some appreciation for uh, how you all must feel uh, engaging in, in something that you really love in terms of the arts and so I, I just commend you for for doing that uh, as part of the university community and I was looking through the the listing of all the artists and uh, my goodness it's a very impressive collection of uh, colleagues here uh, and may I may I read the names is that okay Belinda and Crystal absolutely please okay. do okay well, I, I see that David Drexler is involved, and Amber Esquivel, and uh, Gabriel Gottschalian, uh, Raymond Hall, David Hembry. I actually see his painting right behind him. Fellow Kings County guy there. Uh, Amelia Henkel, uh, Mindy Cates, Mitzi Lowe. Robert Maldonado, Justine McAlpine, uh, Kelly uh, Campos McCoy, also from Hanford. She was a great tennis player in her day. I don't know if she still plays, but she was an awesome tennis player at Hanford High School. Uh, Karen Nephew, Lori Party, Crystal Quintero, yay, Crystal, Melanie Ram. Gail Sherwood, Karine Wongstock, and Lisa Weston. And congratulations to all of you for being involved in this very important uh, community activity. And I'll, I'll end with that. Thanks for including me. And Belinda, I do see that you have a bottle of President's Reserve wine next to you. I do. Is that the yes. raw or the Barbera? Uh, this is not. It is the petite. Oh, the time. petite. Oh, okay. But the Barbera, I understand, is your favorite, and it is also my favorite. Is it? It's great. Well, there will be more coming. <laughs> good, good. But with that, you know, I hope everyone else brought their wine with them, because we would love to do a toast to all of our artists, so all of the ones that Dr. Castro just mentioned. So if everyone has a glass with you, and if, I'll give you guys all a few minutes to grab it if you don't already. And I'd like to say thank you all for all of your hard work. Did, uh, you know, I'd like to just piggyback off of what uh, Dr. Jimenez or Sandoval and Dr. Castro both said that you guys are just done a miraculous job uh, on your art and it's so much appreciated. And so cheers to each, each and every one of you who took the time to enter into our uh, draw uh, into this today and for all of your hard work and dedication into everything that you do. So cheers. Cheers. And once again, thank you to uh, Kevin Smith in the winery who donated all of the wine to all each one of our artists. So thank you very much for that. We, we so much appreciate all that you do for us and always supporting us in everything that we do. So thank you. Uh, Kevin Smith and your crew for everything that you do for us. All right, thank you all so much. Okay, just a little reminder for those of you who are just logging in, um, social media hashtag, please use that if you are posting pictures. Uh, there is a the, the program that Dr. Castro just read off of that had all the names. That was in the email that I sent out earlier this week. Crystal did a great job of putting it together. So, you know, print it out, keep it as a keepsake, um, or also just use it as you are going online to vote for your favorite artwork today. This would be another way to be able to do it um, because you can write numbers next to it and, and whatever you need to do. Um, but the, if you look in the chat room, there's going to be a couple of different links. There's going to be a link to the website where you can take a look at and view the artwork on your own. We will be showing it throughout the event as well, but if you'd like to take a look at it on your own, the website is up for you to click on that and you can take a look at it. 
um, there are going to be numbers next to the artwork. So jot down that number. And once you get to your favorite one, jot it down. And then you'll want to come back and get onto the Pull Tricks link that is also in the chat room. And you'll click on that and you'll get one vote. So one vote only. Once you vote, it doesn't let you get back in. So make sure that you've gone in and you've taken a look and you and you once you vote on that, you know exactly which one you want. So website is in the chat room. Qualtrics form is also in the chat room that you'll want to go in and vote for your favorite one. And if, again, you can always use this printable program um, to help you with doing that. So while we give you an opportunity to, to do that, we're going to go ahead and play some music for you. So um, we were going to have, so there's this violinist in town. His name is Patrick Contreras. Um, I happen to have seen him several times around town and he plays at various different places. And I was just in awe with his work. He does such a great job of just bringing to life that violin and um, such an expression of his of his work and so we wanted to play um there's we've got two different pieces for him one of them is going to be a video that he composed and, and shared with us to share with all of you and then another one is just some music that he had put together for us so uh chris lopez do we have that ready to go i do let me put it up just one second here and i'll share my screen with you all Well, while he's doing that, don't forget, take some pictures, post on your social media, hashtag the FS Art Show, um, and then, of course, tag us so that we can um, go back and grab those later on. Patrick Contreras also has an Instagram page. It's Violin on Fire. Go check out his work. He actually, what he's been doing right now since, of course, quarantine has happened and he's no longer able to go out and play in different um, places, he, you can actually um, um, contact him and he will come out and he does court shows. So he'll come to your house and he'll stay within safe distance and he will play his violin for you and your family. So he's, uh, I'm telling you, I, I can't even begin to uh, express just how talented he is with that violin. Uh, hopefully you'll get a piece of it with what we're going to show right now. So are we ready with that? Yeah, we're queued up. Here you go. All right. All right. So amazing. He's just wonderful. And again, go to his Instagram. If you have Instagram, it's Violin on Fire. You can take a look at some of the other stuff that he's got out there. We have one more piece for you later on. Um, and you book him. Book him to come out. How exciting is that to have somebody come out? And to, to your location or to, if you have a graduate that wasn't able to go out and have something, what a nice way to honor them is have somebody come to, him, to them and, ex, you know, have this expression of music for them. So check him out. We encourage you. We also, if you go to our website, you'll see his information on there as well. And for now, I'm going to turn it back over to Chris. Hello, everyone. I'm Chris Lopez, the Conley Art, the Phoebe Conley Art Gallery technician. Um, I want to mention, uh, please do check out the website. Uh, it's a URL. It's multiverse2020.com. Um, I'm very proud of this website because it's my second website. I had a design in the last couple weeks <laughs> and uh, been up night and day. And with that, I also um, directed a video. So uh, please take a look. That's also posted up on the website. But I'm going to play for that for you now, the video, just um, uh, the first few minutes. We're going to break it up in three segments because it's 11 minutes long and I don't want to you'd have to watch the whole thing in one segment so uh, I'll play the first part of it for you and um, it has the artwork I'm going to share my screen again and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy the, uh, the video here one second all right one more time Are you all seeing that? Yes. Oh, oh, oh. 
have it. So we'll play the next uh, couple clips uh, throughout. Um, so uh, we're going to go right into, uh, we have a couple artists uh, that would like to talk about the work. We actually have four artists, but we're going to start with two and then we'll have two more um, to talk about the work uh, in a little bit later. Uh, I'd first like to introduce um, uh, both uh, Kelly McCoy and Ray Hall both of whom have ex have work in this show. Um, Kelly, are you there? Are you, is your uh, mute button on? I'm here. Oh, there you are. <laughs> my, my volume's not up on my, um, my side. Welcome, Kelly. Thank you so much for um, not only submitting work, but also agreeing to uh, talk a little bit about your work with us here today. Um, the uh, first, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and what you do at Fresno State. Sure. Um, as uh, President Castro said, uh, I'm from Hanford, mm -hmm. and um, I'm actually a lecturer in the Department of Media Communications and Journalism. Fantastic. Uh, so you submitted four pieces, four photos, three landscapes, and a reflection of a window. Those are numbers 30 through 33 on the website. Um, so why did you decide to submit the pieces into the show and any interesting backstory you want to include about the works you submitted? Um, I selected these particular pieces because they each captured a moment in time that was meaningful to me. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, uh, one of my submissions is of Morro Bay um, during one of the last sunsets of 2019. And, you know, looking at it now, uh, you know, after we've been dealing with the pandemic these last couple months, compared to when I took it, I see the photo in an entirely different way. You know, in that what you see is it kind of merge, you, you kind of go from dark on the left hand side of the photograph into the light on the right side of the photograph where the sun is going down and it kind of suggests promise and hope ahead Right. 2020. Well, as we know, things turned out very different, right? Very and much. so with each of the photos, Chris, with each of the photos, that's what they were. They were kind of snapshots in time of something that meant something beyond what the image actually conveys. Definitely conveys that. Definitely. Yeah. Good job. You're very kind. Thanks. <laughs> um, anything else you want to talk about? Any of the other works there? Um, that's one of them. You submitted four, correct? Yeah. I did, sure. Uh, there was also about, one, I'm sorry, go ahead. One, I'm sorry, what about the one with the, um, the reflection of the, I guess it was a church or whatever that is? Right, right, oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah uh, what, what drew me to that particular image is it's, it's a photo taken in the window of a saloon and the reflection is of a church. And so that juxtaposition, right? of a saloon and a church was just so provocative to me. I thought, you know, what's the likelihood that you're going to find these two images kind of together? And so that's what drew me to that one. Wow, yeah, because uh, you wonder what, yeah, what that structure is that you're taking the picture off of. And that's interesting that it's a saloon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can, you, can, you can kind of see the, uh, the, the curtains. They almost look like, you know, a bordello. I mean, not that I've ever been in one, right? But what you see in old Western films. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting. From a technical scan standpoint, I'm going to make this my last question because I need to move sure. on. Um, what kind of camera do you use or are you using? <laughs> yeah, you know what? Interestingly enough, for many of the photos that I take, I've got a Sony, I've got a Nikon, but I often shoot with my iPhone. I was, gonna, I was wondering about that because <laughs> those new yeah. phones, some of those photographers are very angry because they take such great photos. They don't really need their big camera anymore for a lot of the shots you're taking. Right, right. But, you know, it, I have to say that I think that uh, iPhone photography, smartphone photography, it's a great equalizer because think about all the artists that we would not 
have known of because they didn't have those resources of a more expensive camera. Now we can see what they're capturing and it's fantastic. Absolutely. Well, thank you for that, Kelly McCoy. Thank you so much and thanks for uh, submitting your work. Thanks, I'm gonna, you're welcome. I'm gonna move over to uh, Raymond Hall. Are you there, Raymond? Uh, greetings, Chris. Greetings. Hello. Thank you again. Thanks for, um, I know we saw each other a couple days, or yesterday, and uh, it was nice seeing you in person. Um, you know, tell us again a little bit about yourself. I, I just asked Kelly a little bit about yourself and what you do at, at Fresno State. Sure. Um, uh, I'm, I'm happy to say uh, that, I, that I've just completed my 20th year teaching at Fresno State. Congratulations. And, uh, I just uh, I teach in the physics department. I get to teach the classes I really love. I also get to teach in classes about critical thinking and how science works. And uh, it's just it's an outgrowth of my passion for just kind of explaining things. I can't seem to turn it off and it kind of comes through in my art a little bit. I want to thank you, Chris, and also Belinda and Crystal for putting this together. I've learned things about colleagues that I've worked with for 10 years. I had no idea of the, the, that they had these talents and, and it's wonderful to see them on display. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, I feel the same way, you know, and you see these works from these colleagues we see you know, throughout the campus and it's like, wow, I had no idea this person can create, you know, I mean, do it to uh, show work and to make work and do it very well. A um, uh, question for you, um, Raymond. Uh, so you submitted um, a piece, uh, number, so it's, uh, hold on a second, I got my uh, notes mixed up here. Number 37, scrap metal kinetic sculpture. Um, yeah. Any interesting backstory about that piece you submitted? Sure. It was not only the, the still images, but also a video you sent us too to look at, which was much needed. Sure. Um, is, is my screen coming on when I'm talking? I can't tell. I, can I just see you. See you. Yeah. I Everybody can see me? Yeah, you're good. Okay. Yeah. Well, I thought I just, well, first of all, I, I have with me here, um, I feel like I'm, I've made it into the art world because I have actually a groupie. She happens to be my wife as well, my number one fan, Dr. Katie Dyer here. So, so, yeah. Um, I also want to just raise a toast to all the other artists out there. Thank you so much for, for making this possible. And uh, Any I reason have my bottle of wine and I'd like... So part of the thing I do is I collect items that I think might have some kind of value in, in showing something about the natural world. And so I'll just share with you this one right here. So I have my wine bottle, see here in a, yeah. it's, it's there balanced uh, under gravity. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, there it is. Balanced under gravity, only gravity. Um, not recommended for earthquake areas or if you have a cat, but it works pretty well with a wine bottle. Uh, wine right for one bottle, but I thought, I just uh, do a live performance since uh, kinetic sculpture uh, kind of became real with Alexander Calder and right. when he put his mobiles up and said, you know, sculptures can move, you know, and that legitimized some of these things. Also, it goes back to some kind of um, uh, artist like uh, Sir David Brewster, who discovered how uh, polarization rays reflect off water and why we wear Polaroid sunglasses. He invented the kaleidoscope, which is often considered an art piece in itself. And... Uh, there's also Eugene Wigner, the famous physicist, who I quote, he said, the unreasonable effectiveness in math in describing the world. And I want to show off that beauty of that unreasonableness of the math. And so here I have the spring sculpture. You see it is just kind of a bent spring attached oh, yeah. to an apparatus. And I have it hooked up to a little battery here, if you can see inside. When I hook it up, a little light comes on. And let's see if I can actually get it to perform. Now, if I flick this thing, you see it goes back and forth and makes this kind of pattern where the oscillations kind of change their angle and go from one to another. And it's, it's this aspect that I try to bring out in my, my video art, um, try to capture just the essence of the elegance of nature and the hidden mathematical aspects behind it. So that's, that's the sculpture. And the, the backstory is actually this spring was found by my son about 10 years ago coming home from school and he, he just was playing with it in the garage and discovered this property. So I, I fixed it to this base and used it in my teaching of physics 4A. Then I got the idea of attaching that little light to it. And that allowed me then to really capture the essence of that mathematical wonder. And uh, that's what became our piece about a year ago. So wow. it was a strange development. So I was wondering about that coil, that spring. I was wondering, like, it looked like you just haphazardly just, I'm going to bend it this way and that way and then just hit it and make it go. <laughs> My son had it in the vice in the garage. I don't know what he was doing, trying to straighten it out, just playing around with it. And he, he saw it do this strange behavior. And I just happened to go, oh, that's the behavior of a coupled oscillator. I could show that in terms of resonance in my physics 4A class. And wow. I, the hit, you know, I don't know, but 
Uh, it's funny because as, yeah, as, makes... <laughs> as random as his Ben's look, it almost seemed like there was some sort of calculation as to where they are. But you're saying it was just, it was a found object. You just attach an LED to the end of it, popped it in there, and it just happens to make that. Uh, some, some tweaking for optimization oh. might have occurred. Yes. Uh -huh. But the essence of it, found object and then also found kind of behavior, found uh, um, essence of physics that was just laying there in the street. And, and so minimal i mean fascinating it's great yeah i really love the the raw steel the hot rolled steel it's wonderful um one last thing before you go um the video uh so he knows how did you capture the video to capture just the light well it turns out there's some really wonderful um uh, assistance to 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 this kind of art and it, it actually is an app that's available to the iphone um it's called slow shutter it's like a dollar 99 and it allows you to capture this kind of slow motion art. It's, you have to put it on a tripod or it doesn't work, but you can capture a lot of very interesting phenomena with this um, simple device. So I didn't have to write the code for that, but I kind of saw how to implement it in a way that I haven't seen any other artists do. So, Raymond Hall, thank you so much. That was just amazing. And thank you for being such an amazing piece. Thank you, uh, both Kelly McCoy and Raymond Hall. Now I'm going to pass it on to, I think we're going to an intermission, correct, Belinda? That is correct. So we're going to do a quick intermission. We've got some music for, for you from our um, one of our DJs. If you uh, and during this time, um, we're going to kind of just gather ourselves again, and and we've got a full on show. But we're also giving you the opportunity to go to the chat room, click on the link, take a look at the artwork, then go to the um, the Qualtrics form that is also in the link or in the chat room and vote now's a good time to start looking at that and start voting uh, we will be closing towards the end of the um the program but now's a good time for you to take take a look at that so we'll do a quick intermission to give you an opportunity to take a look at that so amelia you ready for some music yes and sorry one more thing that we do have in the midst of all of this again we want to thank um, Kevin Smith and the winery crew for the uh, wine that they donated out today. In the chat room, we will also put the discount code. So it is going to be available until August. So if you are interested, if you like Fresno State wine, this is a great way to support our students. So go on, you'll go to their wine store, you put in that code at the end when you're checking out and it'll give you a 30% off of their selected wine. So we're also going to put that code also in the chat room. So all right. All right. Welcome back everyone. Um, so up next we have um, more of the art submissions in the video form that Chris will play. Um, but before that I'd like to introduce um, our musical guest Peyton Israelian. Um, just a little short bio before I hand it off to her. Um, so Peyton is currently attending California State University Fresno, well, where she will obtain her Bachelor of Arts in Music and Music Education. She has held the principal percussionist position with the Fresno State Symphony Orchestra and Fresno State Wine Orchestra since 2017. She has completed for several years <clears throat> in the Percussive Arts Society California Chapter Competitive Festival, um, each year earning superior marks and has won multiple performance categories in 2017 and 2019. Peyton has also taken part in festivals, including the Fresno State Summer Orchestra Academy, Chosen Bill International Percussion Seminar, and the eighth, <clears throat> excuse me, the eighth installment of the International Katarzyna Mike uh, Marimba Academy. Peyton, please correct me after this. I know I butchered that. I'm sorry. <laughs> And then in 2019, Payton performed as a participant of the Collegiate All-Star Percussion Ensemble at the Progressive Arts Society International Convention, which was held in India, Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, and for those of you who don't know, we have had the pleasure of um, having Payton on our platform before. Um, if you may recall, she played in the Red Fridays. Um, but that was just a short introduction. Up next, I will have the art video and interviews, and we will have. Um, the musical gift from Peyton. So Chris, feel free to start the video. Okay, I'm gonna start the video. Oh, wait, wait, I think we have Peyton playing right now, don't we? I believe so. Oh, yes. Sorry, Peyton. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that um, introduction. Thank you for that. 
Um, the first piece I'm going to be performing is a work by Austin, Texas-based composer Ivan Trevino. He's, um, all of his works are a staple in the percussion repertoire, and the piece I'll be performing is entitled Anthem from his first songbook. Um, and it's a really fun solo for any student or professional to play for any kind of event. And a lot of his influences as a composer and a player is rock and pop music. He's in a multiple rock and pop groups as well as some classical groups. So he takes a lot of that inspiration from that. So I hope you enjoy Anthem. that Peyton. Although, good job. Wow. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you for that. All right, so I'll show another segment of uh, the video, another three minutes here. Yes. Thank you. 
That's the end of the second segment. I just want to add um, thank you to uh, Jose Alagarza from the music department who within 24 hours came up with the uh, music, the soundtrack that you're hearing in the background. I spoke to him on Wednesday night and by Thursday afternoon he had that music for me. So thank you, Jose, if you're out there. Uh, from He's the uh, music technician in the department of music. Thank you for that, Chris. Um, it really is amazing to, <clears throat> I'd like to share a little bit because um, I think it's important. The fact that Jose came up with this track in less than 24 hours is just mind blowing to me. So thank you. Um, so up next we have the artist interviews um, and we will be interviewing Amber Esquivel and David Hembry. Amber, are you there? Yes, I am. Hello everyone. Hi. All right, everyone. So this is Ember Esquivel. She is the Outreach Counselor for Native American Initiative in the Office of Outreach and Special Programs. Um, so the first question I'd like to ask you, Ember, is why did you decide to submit the piece that you did to the show? Yes, yeah, so I decided um, to submit um, my earrings that I've mated. Um, because it was something different than um, what we see in painting and art, um, drawing, and, and et cetera. Um, because um, in the Native American culture, beading is a form of art. And we can bead almost any anything, right? So for graduations, we bead our caps and our feathers. Um, we bead our regalia for powwow dancing, um, earrings, all kinds of jewelry. Um, so that's why I wanted to submit because I wanted to show that this is also art and it also connects to uh, my culture. I love that. Thank you for that. Next question that I have for you is approximately how long did it take you to fully create this piece? Because those beads are very small. Yes, I often get this question a lot and um, I'll show you if you can see these are the earrings here. They're about um, maybe three and a half inches long. And so this top okay. part, this triangle part, usually takes me about 30 minutes. So I can zoom through. And then the dangle part, that's where um, it takes a little longer depending on the style I want to do. Um, so I usually say about give me two movies and I can complete a pair. Oh, wow. Okay, that's pretty fast either way. I just can't fathom trying to hold the small beads in my hand every time. Um, but thank you for that. Um, the last question I have for you before moving on, um, is there something you do to get focused when creating your artwork? So a lot of the earrings that I make um, are very different. Um, they all come in different colors. So primarily it's the colors, and I have some other examples to kind of that's share. That's cute. Mm -hmm. um, it comes with colors, um, playing with colors, different styles. This one here is purples and yellows. It also comes with, um, my mom is a beater as well. She doesn't make earrings, but she'll make graduation caps, baseball caps, feathers, um, etc. So it comes with conversations with her and what she's designing, and then it may spark an interest in me and what I want to do. Or if I'm beating something for someone, then I want to think about um, would this person like these colors? Do they like this pattern? Then um, that's where that will come from, um, too. Definitely. Personalization is everything, I think, especially, um, you know, if you're giving 
your product to a customer. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, Amber, up next we have David Henry. David, are you there? I am. How are you? I'm well, thanks. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Um, all right, everyone. So we have David here. He's from the Division of Student Affairs and Enrollment Management and Development. Um, I have a couple of questions for you, David. The first one is, um, after submitting your artwork in this exhibit, um, would you consider giving up your current career and committing all of your time to being a full-time artist? <laughs> yes. I, I love that question. Um, I consider myself to be a full-time artist. Um, it's, uh, I, I work full-time to afford that. Um, it's kind of the difference between uh, occupation and vocation. Um, I, I've always been called to be an artist um, since I was actually aware, um, but it doesn't always uh, provide a 401k and uh, pay the bills. And um, <laughs> at least for me, I've never been able to figure that out. But my lens that I see the world uh, through is, is that of an artist. So um, I had a friend that describes himself as a lawyer uh, who farms and he has to be a lawyer so that he can afford to be a farmer um, It's kind of a similar thing. I'm always going to do art um, And and that's really my call, but uh, I also am called to serve my community And so I feel really gratified with the work. I'm able to do as well. So Yeah, it'd be nice, but I'm waiting for retirement uh, to be that full-time. <laughs> there you go. And we hope to see your artwork during your retirement and, you know, after your career here at Fresno State. That would be amazing. Um, another question I have for you, David, is um, as an employee at Fresno State, is there anything in your area of study or workspace or maybe a physical space um, on campus that inspires you to be creative? Yeah, having um, spent a great deal of time in Conley Arts uh, in the 70s and 80s. I know I'm that old. Um, I periodically, when I need to take a break from screen time or sitting in my office or my desk, I wander through the halls of Conley Art and uh, reminisce. I get a little ceramic dust on my shoes and uh, I like to smell the smells over there and it uh, it's just a great place for me. Um, obviously, walking around campus is also, I think, very inspiring. The, the grounds are, are wonderful. Um, I never get tired of doing that in the seasonal changes and yellow, yellow leaves from the ginkgo trees and things like that. It's just pretty awesome. So we're fortunate to be in that landscape. Definitely, I agree. And I remember, because I'm a, an alumni myself from Fresno State, I remember choosing the college because of the landscape. It's just so beautiful. It's so beautiful to look at and be able to experience. Um, even now as a staff member, I take my walk, so it's really amazing. Um, but okay, thank you, David. Thank you so much for sharing. And we look forward to hearing from you after retirement with your art. Well, for sure. um, I am excited <laughs> to tell you that uh, I've been accepted into the MA program in art and design. So this fall, I'll be a Fresno State student um repeating my master's program so i look forward to getting to know the folks in the department now you'll uh, be seeing me a lot What's that <laughs> you'll be seeing me a lot <laughs> yeah, uh, chris we'll have to hang out we will <laughs> congratulations right. that's awesome david congratulations thank you david um up next everyone we have more music by peyton israelian um peyton are you there I am here. Thank you. Is there anything that you would like to share? I know I already introduced you, but um, anything you'd like to share for those viewers who just um, came on the call? Yeah, um, I'm just very grateful to, to be able to perform, you know, during this time. It's been really hard for musicians lately, um, especially those who, um, especially percussionists, if they don't have access to the instruments or they can't afford the instruments, um, they're definitely missing out on the, on the performing right now and making music together and like what everyone has been saying is creating art together. It's, we have our own, you know, art form of sorts. So it's, it, it's very, it's, it's been really hard these last couple months. So having some outlets like this and being able to perform for audiences like you and being able to perform for, you know, you, the Fresno State faculty and other students, it's been a really fun opportunity and has made me excited for 
hopefully when <laughs> this is all over and we can all start performing again and have live audiences, I think it'll be a, a great reunion once we can start playing live music again. I agree. I do miss the live performances. Um, but with that being said, um, let's hear some of your music. Yes, so the second and uh, final marimba solo piece I'll be playing is called Marshmallow by David Friedman. And I want to clarify that it's not marshmallow like like the food, it's marshmallow, like a, like a mellow kind of mood. Um, and David Friedman is a jazz percussionist, but he primarily plays vibes and marimba, and he has a lot of marimba and vibe solos that have a lot of that jazz influence in it. I'm just going to read a quick uh, program note. It says, this marimba solo is equivalent of fluffy white clouds, on a breezy summer's day with pleasing and simple melody, this solo will put a smile on the audience faces. So I was hoping with, with this solo, everyone would get a sense of, of what it would be like to be outside on a summer day when it's breezy and hopefully not 110 degrees outside. Um, <laughs> um, but that mellow kind of mood, it just kind of, it relaxes it. And it's just a very, very beautiful, very lyrical piece that I've been, I've had the pleasure of getting to perform over the last few years. So I hope you enjoy my mellow. Thank you, Peyton. Thank you very much. Yeah, good job, bravo, wow, <laughs> amazing. So uh, we have the last um, part of the part three, this is the final part of the video, which I'm gonna share with you all right now. So again, bear me one second, let me share this.
Okay, there we have it. Um, I'd like to also just take this uh, moment to um, remind everyone to do ca uh, cast your votes. Uh, we have the links posted up there to the website, it has all of the artists' uh, information, images, and it has the numbers next to their name. And there's another link up on the chat site there on to the right. Just open up that chat box. There's uh, links that we're posting for the, uh, that takes you to the poll to make your, to, so you can cast your vote for the People's Choice Award. Uh, and one more shout out to the Fresno Arts, I'm sorry, the Fresno uh, Winery for th this fantastic wine they've been drinking all along. So thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Yes, please remember to go on and vote. We're going to be closing in about 15 minutes. So if you haven't already done so, um, go on and open up that link that is in our chat room. It'll take you straight to the Qualtrics. They're numbered, so if you don't know the actual number of, the, of your favorite art piece that just popped up, um, you can. All, there's also a link in our chat room for the website. Take a look at that website, pull it up. You can take a look at the art individually and you can find the, the, I'm sorry, the number that is associated to it and then it'll match what is on our um, Qualtrics form. So as you guys know, there's two different types of awards going out today. Um, and one is for the best of show, which is already that we had some artists come in and take a look at all the artwork and they have made a choice based off of that uh, as a group. And then, of course, the best of shows. So go on and, and take a look at it, please, and, and vote for your favorite one. They, everyone put in so much time and effort into um, putting this together to, for you. So please go on and, and vote. Um, we would like to bring some fun music. So Patrick Contreras, as we mentioned earlier, not only does he, he come out to your house and he plays the violin, but he does some he, he um, puts together some really unique um, music with his violin. So he gave us a video. Um, do we have that YouTube video that we can play? I do. I'm going to share with you all right now. All right. Well, just once again, he just awes me with his music and what he can do with that violin. So uh, again, go to his uh, web page. We have it in the chat room. We we'll also have it in our, on our, our um, web page as well. It'll be on our social media. Um, check him out. Again, he'll come out. He's doing, um, I can't remember exactly what they're called, but something like porch. Um, I don't know, he'll come out to your front yard and you'll play out in, in your front yard for maybe one of your graduates or you've got a birthday coming up or something. Um, he'd be happy to, to, to come out and play a couple of, of your favorite songs. And that's the good thing about it is that you let him know what you want to hear and he can almost play it all. So i um, so excited that he was able to provide us some information. He would have loved to have been here live, uh, really try to make it work, uh, but it, he had, it's, gradu it's graduation season and so he's out doing that. So awesome, awesome work. It's been such an um, amazing to hear all the wonderful uh, work here today. So what do we got going on? I know, um, Chris, did you take a look at what I sent you right now, if we can fix that real quick? Um, all right, so moving on with our program, well, we've got, uh, if you haven't already voted, if you haven't gone on and voted yet, please do so. Uh, we're going to open it up for about a good 10, 15 minutes to our artists. We're going to let them share a little bit of, of their inspiration on their work and uh, where they work on campus. I think this is a good opportunity for us to get to know one another. And so we're going to open it up. And meanwhile, while we're doing that, um, we are going to, um, well, I'm sorry, well, they are speaking and, and sharing a little. We're going to start tallying up the, the polls. So if you haven't already gone on and voted, you've got about, we're going to close it probably in about five minutes. So if you haven't already voted, please go on and vote. Um, and we will be closing it up very soon. And then we will be sharing with you um, who, who the winners are for both Best of Show and for the People's Choice. So with that, uh, we're going to open it up to some of our artists, like I said. Um, and we're going to start with Karen Nephew. Karen, are you there? I'm here. Hi, Karen. I'm so happy to see you. So Karen and I work in the same college. We both work in the College of Health and Human Services. And so I'm so excited to see 
the work that you had put in or uh, had um, shared with us. So if you can tell us a little bit about your artwork. Okay. Um, uh, I work in physical therapy. This is my second career after I flunked retirement with the county after 43 years. Thank you, Dr. Sandoval, for hiring me when you were in Arts and Humanities. <laughs> so, um, so that's kind of my career. Um, I found my dream career in my 60s, and I found that I could actually draw more than a stick in my 50s. Um, <laughs> a friend of mine, uh, we were sitting together one day and decided that we wanted to find something fun to do. So we had the adult school booklet open, and we both said, oh, watercolor, that looks good. So off we went to watercolor, and um, I was scared to death. Um, I had never done anything like that before. I really failed in high school art. It was terrible. Um, so anyway, uh, we're, we got all our supplies, and our teacher, um, her name was Kay Kimber Owens, and she was already 89, I believe, 88, 89 at the time that we were, um, we were taking lessons from her and she handed around a box of photographs and she said pick one and then she said paint and we just about all died <laughs> so anyway that's how my career started and i don't know if they really call it a career it's um it's been a sideline um but my inspiration started well i started doing like small cottages and things like that and then i was spending more time along the california coast and um, my daughter, since she has been very, very small, has absolutely loved sea otters. So I picked up the paintbrush one day and I decided, okay, I'm gonna paint sea otters. Well, I was so apprehensive, but it ended up turning out really well. And um, my art teacher, she was just, thrilled and she kept pushing and pushing me to get it out there so um we were in morro bay one day and i happened to show a gallery owner over there the photo or the photo of my painting and she uh, was very gracious and is letting me show some of my work in her gallery and uh, most of it you can see are sea side animals scenes um and that was pretty much the focus of my inspiration at that time and um, all of those paintings were probably all done between the hours of midnight to 4 or 5 a.m. I paint at night and I get started and I kind of can't quit so um, and I'm a late nighter so that's uh, that's where it all comes from so I've been really lucky and it's been very fun and Anybody can do it if I can do it. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. I don't know if I could do it because I stick figures is about as best I can do. But you, your work is amazing, Karen, and thank you so much. And and it almost sounds like you need to get some sleep. But it also sounds like this is some type of peace for you. It and is. I think Right now, especially in the times that we are having some type of peace or something, some type of outlet is so important. And so, you know, thank you for sharing with us and, you know, continue to paint and continue to show it out there. And I look forward to seeing your work as we continue to progress in our, our faculty and staff art show. So thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much for participating. I really enjoyed this. This is wonderful. And um, everybody can enjoy the paintings. I specifically pick those because I don't know about anybody else but I really really miss going to the coast I need to get out of my house <laughs> yes. yes well it was nice seeing you yesterday to pick up the wine and, and the certificate and stuff, okay so thank you Brenda. um how about Lori Lori are you still there are you would you like to share a little bit about your paintings and and your work I'm sorry would you like to share a little bit about your work <laughs> hi yeah that's hi. great um, so first, I'm Lori Pardee. Um, I am the campus interior specialist um, in facilities planning and design. Um, I've been on campus 17 years now, um, and I graduated in 2005 after 18 years. It was a long trek to get it, but I graduated from Fresno State with a history degree. Love it here, and I've been on campus so long, and it's, I miss it, telecommuting. Um, 
Photography is something uh, I got laid in as well um, about five and a half years ago. While I've always loved to take pictures, um, I was never serious about it. And I decided to you know, get my first DSLR. And once I did that, I had to get the knowledge base. So I started taking um, a class at Clovis Adult Education, actually. Um, and it opened my eyes to what I loved about photography in a lot of different ways, both in the urban setting. But for me, my mom, um, she passed away five years ago, and she always took me on these road trips growing up all through California. And for me, with the landscape, I realized I loved to get in the car, take my camera, and just explore no matter where it is. And for me, I really try to show how accessible places are in California. I don't go on these, you know, 20 mile hikes in the middle of nowhere. I'm local, I'm, I do drive, but I try to stay close. One of my favorite pieces that I shared this time is called Bowing to Beauty. That's actually at Lake Huntington, um, or Huntington Lake, excuse me, um, right at the um, Rancheria campsite. Um, right now, that one um, resonates with, with me. It resonated then when I took it um, back in 2017. But to me, it displays how much we as individuals we take on so much. We have to bend to all the changes that go around us, but we don't break. And yet we can also find the beauty and the, the pleasures in life as we go through all these challenges. And this is a perfect example, being able to come together and see everybody's amazing work. I have been smiling throughout everything as I've learned about the different artists, read all of their bios and seen all of their artwork. It is just so uplifting um, and helps me want to continue to go out there and explore, take pictures and share. Thank you so much, Karen, or I'm sorry, Lori. And you know, it, it's so important because especially during these times of quarantine, you talk about how your mom would take you and just drive and, and you know, in staying safe right now, what is what a nice way to go out there and so anybody who's ever curious or after this thinks maybe I can take a few pictures, you know, with my iPhone or something, or if you've got a nice camera, go for a drive. You know, if you have children, take your children yeah. for a drive and take some pictures, let them explore, let them see what, what nature is really about. So thank you so much for that, Lori. I well, really through all of this, I have been still going on my road trips and going alone and being solo and being safe, but continuing to take my photographs. You gotta do what you gotta do. Exactly, so thank you. Thank you, Lori, for that. I really appreciate that. And yes, we're, we're learning from everyone here today, for sure. So at this point, let's open it up. Anyone else, any of you other artists that would like to share a little bit about where you come from on campus, how long you've been there, and, and what your inspiration is behind the art? Um, just start speaking. I think we're going to go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, each one of the artists have the opportunity to unmute yourself. Um, so go ahead and do so and, and, and start sharing. I can, I can say something. Mel Melanie Ram here. Hi, Melanie. Hi. Welcome. I just want to make sure I'm unmuted. Yes. Um, first of all, thank you so much for putting this on, Belinda and Crystal and Chris. This is an amazing show and it's really cool to see everybody's artwork and I can see you all put a lot of work into this. So thank you for doing this. Um, and I'm, I'm proud to be part of such a great group and see everybody's art. Um, my painting is mostly abstract these days, um, but I started painting when I was, I don't know, my mom said when I was like three. She said, <laughs> she said I, uh, was eating too much in the kitchen, so she gave me a paintbrush and I never went back to the kitchen. <laughs> so, um, so I've tried all different kinds of media, but I found um, acrylic paint is, works really well for someone who has a full-time job but still wants to do art on the side. I do photography as well, um, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great break and I, I've done it all my life just as uh, a, a different, I, so I teach political science, I, I teach international relations. I've been at Fresno State since 2006. Um, so when I get a free weekend or a free day or, or morning, 
um, that's when I, I try to paint. Um, so yeah, that's, that's about it. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Melanie. Uh, your work, artwork is wonderful, and it it sounds like it's such a pastime for you. I mean, it started out when you were young, and um, you know your family introduced you to this and said, you know, "Take this on," and and you've taken it and you've ran, and it's become just a part of who you are. And especially again, just kind of going back to in these times, but even outside this, it's just in the in what used to be our normal world. Well, what a way to just go out and and you know, morning, noon, night, or something that can work around your schedule, um, somewhat of a hobby, you know, for what it, what it may or may not be, but it sounds like you, you've got that outlet that you can go and you can share and, and make this beautiful piece. So thank you so much for sharing it with us. We really appreciate it and we love having you um, here with us today. And so thank you, thank you very much for that. Yeah, thank you, Melanie. But anyone else? Anyone else like to share a little bit about your artwork? We're going to be closing the polls in about four minutes. So if you haven't voted already, um, please do so. Um, go to the link, vote for your favorite one. It's all in the chat room. But we've got enough time for about one or two more artists who would like to share. Anyone else like to share? Um, I would like to share. Hi, Corrine. Hi, Linda. So my name is Corrine. Um, I'm from the Alumni Association, I'm part of an engagement team. And uh, I come from Malaysia and my whole family are actually artists. We just work on very different mediums. My mom is definitely into oil paintings and she loves painting. Growing up, I would always watch her painting like humans and she has this huge artwork of me when I was five years old and she's still in our living room. Uh, my brother is huge into um, chalk artwork and he paints animals. And then my dad and I are definitely more of the animated side of things. And my artwork is not very conventional. Um, I'm a huge nerd, huge, huge, huge Marvel comic book fans and stuff. So you can see kind of my artwork is kind of like a little odd. It's more like angry, but then it's Venom and Carnage. And one of my pride about my artwork is I always start with five colors and that's the five colors that I go off on. And throughout my whole artwork, it's a lot of experimentation with all the mixing, the mixing of colors and what colors they can come up with, starting from just the primary colors. And then once you start with that color, you finally decide on a mixture of color you like. You have to start from start to end. You can't take a pause, you can't anything, because once the color dries up and you have to recreate that color again, it's pretty much impossible. So my artwork is kind of like, that's the basis and like the story behind all my artwork and just, kind of taking your own take on your favorite superhero growing up, the nostalgia, your anti-heroes, your villains, that you grow up and you're so excited to watch on TV every Sunday morning or Saturday morning and to bring it to life in your own way and how you always envision them to be. So yeah, that's why I chose uh, Venom and Carnage. I have a whole bunch of other collection of uh, DC comics, but they're more like color blocking style which is very kind of easier to recreate, but uh, Venom and Carnage with the shading and fading and all the different colors that I had to create to come up with those two paintings is very dear to my heart. So hey, yeah. Karine, I have a question for you. Yeah. I apologize if it's a mess up my end, but um, for your title, it was submitted as Alumni Engagement Coordinator, yeah, which was awesome, but I, I know it's Venom and I never got back to you, but I thought it was so funny. Was that intentional? Or was that no, it wasn't intentional. <laughs> I thought you were asking about my job title on my painting title. Well, the job title is different. <laughs> <'cause office laughs> well, yeah, okay, that's the location. Okay, so I should I should have I never got around to it. And I thought it was hysterical. Like that was <laughs> that's an awesome title. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically my job title, but yeah. <laughs> well, it's perfect. I love it. Thank you. Well, that's awesome, Corrine. And it, I love the fact your story of it being in a whole. Your, all your family does it, and they're all yeah. very unique in their own way. And you know, as as I have my children and stuff, I think about that, and I think that's that's so nice that you you all have the same type of passion, but you've kind of taken it into your own way. And I think that's definitely the way of art. Is there's no two things that are alike. Everything is different, but everything is so beautiful in its own way. So thank you for sharing that, Kareen. I really appreciate that. And I think we've got enough time for about one more artist to share, and then we're going to play some music. And then I think we're about ready to, how's that telly going? Do we need a few more minutes on that or are we, are we getting pretty close? You can always just message me if, if um, 
so I can uh, we'll know from there. But do we have a do we have another artist who would like to share a little bit about your work and who you are? Sure, I'll share. Hi, hi everyone. <laughs> Uh, my name is Mindy Cates, and I'm the survivor advocate on campus for the whole campus, not just students. And I started art probably since a child that I really, uh, in high school, got inspired with ceramics and painting and drawing, um, creating all types of things. Um, I'm also a Fresno State alum, and I took some art classes, even though my major was psychology and later social work. Um, I've been on campus for about a year now and so one of the things I really enjoy is me and the case manager at the health center Diana Karagosian run a healing through series for students in which we include art to be part of their healing journey um, and so this summer even we did like a healing through uncertainty zoom uh, discussion group and had some art in there to create with a student. So we'll, we'll be continuing the group in the fall and I just really love taking my, my, my job and my career and also doing my hobby and my passions all to come together at Fresno State. So I'm very thankful for that opportunity. That's, that's so awesome. And I love how it's something that you had as a child and now it's kind of grown into you know, who you are and what you're bringing to campus and you're able to share with so many people. So thank you so much for participating this year. We really enjoyed having you here with us and sharing your story and um, sharing your artwork with us. So thank, thank you very much for, Mindy, for everything that you do. It looks like the polls are now closed. So we are going to play, um, a little. Amelia, can you play a couple of songs, maybe one or two songs or we just, take a look at this and see where we are and then we'll be back in just a few minutes and we'll be able to to share with you um the best of show and the people's choice award so give me just a minute and we'll be right back um all right everyone i just like to share a little bit about what our show means to me um before we present the winners which is a little winner um, I'd like to say first and foremost thank you to a few people um, and just bear with me so I'd like to say thank you to the Department of Art and Design um, first and foremost because they came up with this idea we just you know helped them and supported them to bring it to life so that everyone can enjoy and that truly is a beautiful thing um, to me um, thank you to the Fresno State Winery for providing the wines um, again uh, please remember that the FS Art Show code is available until August 1st, I believe. Um, so order some wine. Um, I'd also like to say thank you to Dr. Castro, Provost Jimenez Sandoval, Peyton Israelian, Patrick Contreras, Jose Lagarza. Um, our participants, I can't forget those, otherwise this wouldn't have even been possible. Um, and just the Art Show Committee and the Staff Assembly in general, this has been such a great learning experience overall. I can't, I can't even tell you how much I've learned um, in these last couple of months, uh, not only about myself, but about everyone in general. Um, I'd also like to say that staying connected is important during this time. Um, I know that we have, you know, with COVID and everything going on, it is a difficult time, so connectedness is very important. Um, I'd also want to touch base on the fact that this was a safe space for everyone to connect and express themselves. I've never worked in another um, university or institution, any workplace that allowed us to creatively express ourselves. And, and that, that is a really beautiful thing. And that's, that was my biggest takeaway. And I just, I wanna cry because I'm very emotional, but it was, it was very beautiful to see all of the artwork um, and just the support from the community. It was really beautiful. So. Continue to explore life without fear, continue to express yourselves, and give your inner child something to play with. So with that being said, I'd like to hand this off to Chris Lopez, and he will let us know who the winners are. 
Thank you, Crystal, for that heartfelt message. That was very nice. I feel similarly. And um, you know, thank you all again for participating in this wonderful event. I mean, it really, like, like Crystal said, it just you know, to get all of you together um, from various areas. I mean, this is really amazing. Um, just uh, one more thank you to uh, Martin Valencia and uh, for his idea for this. And of course, making the one stipulation that those of us from the Department of Art and Design cannot submit artwork, which was really wonderful. We could help help uh, set up the show, but not to actually participate in the art uh, and exhibiting work. So that was really wonderful, I thought. Um, uh, also, just again, thank you to the Staff Assembly Executive Committee um, for co-hosting. So, um, Linda Munoz, uh, Crystal Quintero, uh, Emilia Hinkle, uh, Daniel, Danielle Rodriguez, and Chris Cruz uh, yeah. for their help in all this. Um, Thank you to our jurors. Uh, Dr. Jackie Ryle, uh, who is a writer and artist, uh, photographer, and founder of Road to Empowerment. Uh, hopefully, or maybe some of you know who she is. She, she's around campus a lot. I see her all over throughout Fresno. She's a wonderful human being. I'm so, we're so lucky to have her as a juror. In addition to which, we had Peter Jansen, a painter, artist, and a, a member of Corridor 2122 Gallery in downtown Fresno. Uh, thank you, both of you. I, I, I know Jackie. I saw Jackie there. Um, I hope Peter's around. If not, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to him and thank him in person. Um, but yeah, thank you, Jackie and Peter, for taking this very seriously. They, um, you know, it wasn't uh, an easy decision for them. There are a total of 18 artists, 47 total submissions, and they had to choose one winner, one single best in show award. Um, it turned out to be a much more difficult task and um, they were blown away by all of the talent in this pool of work that was handed to them and uh, they I think part of it, they weren't expect I mean they knew it was gonna be good but I guess they weren't really anticipating like, how difficult the decision was gonna be um, so uh, coming out with one decision one person was really difficult so they did want to make a couple uh, honorable uh, mentions before we before I announce the best in show. So um, I'll uh, announce the honorable mentions there are two, and then the, the single best in show award, and then the people's choice award. Uh, the first honor, honorable mention goes to number thirty four by Mitzi Lowe uh, to photograph entitled "Solitude and Red Pants." Now this is one piece that the jurors felt that just really it's the, the one where I uh, see someone covered it's snowing and just snow everywhere and my initial uh, thought was how how did she take that picture <laughs> she was in that same snow uh, environment taking that shot but also they felt there was a really wonderful connection to um, a feeling that we're feeling now with this covid situation so they there was a just a wonderful uh, uh, symbol symbol symbolic uh, uh, piece that they they felt that was really uh, connected um the uh other person that the jurors would like to mention is all of the work before uh, submissions by David Hembry, numbers one through four. They were um, just really intrigued by the series of work uh, he had submitted and felt the, the need to, to mention that. So um, so thank you, um, Mitzi Lowe and David Hembry. Um, congratulations. Um, so <laughs> the Best in Show Award. And um, the Best in Show Award, like I said, there were so many good ones um, and it's it, it was tough it was really hard um, this award goes to number 37 scrap metal kinetic sculpture by Raymond Hall <laughs> congratulations Raymond uh, I'm, I'm uh, speechless I, I all the <laughs> talent that, that is out there I uh, thank you very much a little burst of creativity according to the provost counts for something apparently thank you very much all right well good job yeah excellent piece thank you wow thank you the people's choice award now um this award um you know we we decided actually i think it was i don't know it was belinda's idea it was someone else's idea in in the, the in the team who had decided to have this award and we were struggling trying to figure out how we're going to make this uh, voting poll thing work and it worked and you know uh, Chris Cruz who helped in the, the back end um, really did a wonderful job organizing this uh, for all of you to uh, see the numbers and then uh, set up a link a polling for, for everyone to go on and vote so thank you Chris for setting that up uh, so with that said people's choice award goes to number 43 deckline footwear by Gabriel Gotchalian 
And I, congratulations, Craig. Well, good job. And you know, I was, must say, when I first saw that piece, I didn't know it was a drawing. I thought it was a photograph. So yeah, wonderful piece. Are you there, Gabriel? Maybe he's not there. Oh, it's too bad. Maybe he's, no. hopefully um, he'll find out sooner or later. He got the award, the People's Choice Award. Um, oh, there he is. I'm here. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> I appreciate all of you. I mean, everybody did great work, and it was it was phenomenal. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, you're wrong. You, you can thank the audience. <laughs> yeah. The audience. <laughs> yeah, thank you for uh, for your participation in the show, and thank you to everyone. I mean, this is really incredible. I know I speak for all of us on the team here that in the multiverse team. Uh, you know, we're looking forward to doing this again. Uh, we were hoping to do this, obviously, in the gallery at BB Conley. We are looking forward to do it again. I mean, this is. I mean. If we got this much attention doing it online as we did on a, I mean, I had no experience designing a website <laughs> um, and we were able to pull it off. Uh, we can certainly, I think, have a, you know, a wonderful, uh, uh, get, uh, we can get enough people involved and I think it's gonna even be bigger than, uh, we, than ever if we do it inside the Conley Gallery. I'm really looking forward to that. So um, hopefully we won't have to do this again <laughs> online. But it was still a lot of fun. I really thank everyone for participating. I just I had I had a lot of fun. I, I second what uh, Crystal said. You know, it was really um, there was certainly an emotional element here for me. It was a wonderful experience. You know, doing all this. I'm also very relaxed too. Now we're all done, <laughs> and so I'm gonna drink my wine and I will <laughs> hand this over to uh, Belinda for the closing uh, comments there. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So again. Yeah, kudos to my entire team who helped put this together and the arts department and Dr. Castro and uh, Dr. Sandoval and everyone who helped. This isn't the end. This is the end of this show, but we always have something in the works. So Staff Assembly does have another Red Friday coming up. We typically take a break over the summer, but not this summer. We're going to continue with it. So we do have our next one on, gosh, let me look at this. I think it's June 12th, Friday, June 12th. We have a, uh, um, our next Red Friday that'll be hosted by the, uh, um, the Henry Mann Library. So join us for that. Watch out for an email for a link to join us for that. Thank you again to all of our artists who jumped on and participated and every, you know, everyone who pulled this off. I, I truly, truly appreciate this. And just, it was just a nice little nice afternoon of enjoyment and this recording will be available we're going to put it on our website if you want to share it um, you'd be more than happy to share it with your friends and family and anyone who you'd like to so thank you all very much don't forget if you posted some pictures um, hashtag us so that we can make sure to to showcase it as well on our own social media so thank you all again very much and i will see you guys all soon